Okay. Right? Are you from French Canadian? French Canadian, Quebec, Montreal. Uh, I'm a friend of Normand Follum. Normand is at home, oh. grinding a 61 inch. You know, I took six years of French, I can't say anything. But if you say, if you say it, it's even worse. I could say it. It's about 90. You say that. This is a 36 inch. You got to speak louder. Okay. 36 inch Pyrex F3.5. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is the way it comes out of the oven, the second pass in the oven. So it's not, it's not, it's not you, you uh, curve it by melting it or yes. slumping it? Slumping it. Okay. The first pass in the oven, all Eddie, those posts are the same height. So the top glass and the bottom glass are parallel to each other. Every post is the, the same height. The first pass. The first pass in the oven, you want to fuse the glass on the post. Yeah. And then that ensures easy, it's easier to process like this because otherwise each post would have to be cut at different height with angles. Yes. It's a nightmare. Yes. So you do away with that, everybody's the same height. So everything's like basically flat the first pass. Yes. Is that a hotter pass than the second pass? No, no, because you got to be careful not to overheat the, the glass, the, the Pyrex. Yeah. If you heat it too much, you got to bring it to the soft point. Yes. If you overdo it, it's going to poke through. Poke right through. Right? Then you screw it. Uh, so the second pass, you want to create a pre curve. You want to slump both the top and the bottom plate at the same time. So you take a ceramic mold and you shape it to an F3, an F3.5, an F4, or whatever the focal ratio you want. Yeah. So you put the mirror onto it, turn on the oven, and both plates will slump. Yeah. So you have a bottom curve and a top curve. Then they slip the mirror up, so what was like a bell-shaped curve, concave, is now your reflective curve. Yes. The place you're going to put the aluminum. That's what you're seeing here, the fingerprints of the ceramic mold. That's going to go away yep. when you start grinding. Is this the thickness here at the, the edge is the same thickness as in the middle now, because you've got a pre-curve. Yeah. So when you Does do he flatten the, the back before he... Uh, no, the cell has to accommodate a slightly curved back. Yes. But uh, that's easy to do. You just put taller pins on your, tri your triangle. Yes. So they pivot a little bit more. And that's not a problem. The turntables that you see there actually have... Uh, oh, you mean for the machine to grind it? Yeah. Is that, has a float cell on it? Yes. Okay. Now, how much is, this is a F36. This is a 36 inch F3.5. How much does it weigh? 127 pounds. So it'll cool down a lot faster than a full thickness one. Yes, yes. So I understand. Now, how does he come up with how much spacing to put in between the back and the front? Oh, that's the, uh, the theoretical ratio, six to one. Okay, that's the okay. That's how he comes up with that. Okay. So an 18 inch should be theoretically. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I understand that. For a normal thick. For a this normal is thickness. actually okay. It's a lot less heavy than a full thickness one, but it's got the same rigidity because of the number of posts. Okay. It doesn't have the same the, the same mass as a full one, so it's a lot lighter. But because of the number of posts there, it's, it's actually more rigid. Okay. So what made him go from making? Um, Wooden telescopes. Yeah, wooden, yeah, wooden anamorphic shaped telescopes that look like whatever and uh, that are very distinct. Uh, People wanted bigger make a mirrors. Sandwich, make a sandwich mirrors. People wanted bigger mirrors. Uh, they, they had their own telescope. They wanted a 27 inch, 36 inch, 40 inch. And we had a hard time getting the blank materials like this remade. Some companies said we could do it, and he wanted to buy them like this and just do the parabola. But he couldn't get any delivered. After a year, two years, he said, screw it, I'm going to make my own. And there's people that are ordering 36 inches, 40 inches, 50 inches, 61 inches. We got all the Just the blank? And a couple of customers want the telescope uh, structure too. Oh, okay. There's a picture of a 50 inch there, going to a group in California. Uh, there's a customer in Italy that wants 36 inch with telescopes, 50 inch with telescopes, a blank 36 inch, aluminized. Uh, 
the customer for the 60-inch in the oven there. Uh, he wants to build his own uh, telescope, but he might consider having Norma make it because Norma knows how to do it. There's no guessing. These guys are going to be busy making a big observatory while Norma builds the structure for the telescope, so there's less waiting time. <laughs> yeah. It's huge. The guy that bought a 36 inch, the first one, went through it in no time. He reached a limit, magne magnitude, reachable with a 36 inch, because he's chasing quasars and uh, brown dwarfs. Yes. So he wants a bigger telescope in order to see those quasars and brown dwarfs better. There's aperture fever galore. <laughs> And now weight reduction. That almost looks like from here that that's curved. Yeah, there's a little bit of a curve because of the sloping process. But that's all right. The surface is going to be exactly the shape that you want it. Once they have that little curve there, that's there by uh, by this, but not by design, but it's just the way it comes out of the oven. And they stay there after that. Once all the contacts are there, that's the key. You want a rigid surface, then you shape it. Okay. No, I understand that. It's not a defect. It just looks weird. You're, you're yeah, expecting you can to see it straight. Well, once it's silver, you don't really see it. Yeah. <laughs> the top plate, as long as it's welded on the post, fine. What does he put in between the post and the... There's some kind of a glue, and uh, the glue is just there so that all those pieces are there together. So they don't fall then, during the... Oh, yeah, when you put the top plate on it, they don't fall. But that glue evaporates in the curing process when you cook it. And so then it actually fuses. Yeah, glass onto glass, exactly. Or in this case, borosilicate onto borosilicate. Pyrex on Pyrex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can actually see there's a there's a slump there. The bottom part is actually curved, so is the top part. The top part's curved like this, so is the bottom part. It's a lot easier to make a structure now that it doesn't weigh 600 pounds. You know? It's only 125 pounds. Yep. Oh my God. Yep. <laughs> You get one person can load it if you're strong enough. Yeah, yeah sure. I mean, uh, we've moved the big Orion monster scope. One guy, he got two wheels on one end and like a one handle with a big wheel, and you just put it down and you roll it on a nice flat surface. But if you're on the grass, uh, you need two guys to help you move it. Yeah. But these big scope, you know, people put them in their own private observatory. So once they're there, they're there for life. And, but you can move them. That's that's the magic of these things. You get the weight out. Looking forward to that. So that's going to be fun. And you can still move it. Cool. All right, thanks. That's going to be a big download on YouTube. What do, what do you do? Well, no, but it's okay. You can do up to two gigs. I already that, that didn't take two gigs.